Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Juice Baseball channel, and welcome back to the Kansas City Royals rebuild here on MLB The Show 23. We are here at the start of another year. If we go to the GM goals, it is year number three. We're only getting better. And to start year number three, we've gone 10 and four. Last episode was opening day where Roki Sasaki took the mound and chased history with strikeouts. And we only got better from there. Only losing four games so far this season. We currently lead the division by two games because remember this division is pretty darn bad for the most part. Usually the Guardians are, are okay, but other than that, everybody seems to be always pretty bad. Sometimes the Twins can make an argument, but you never know. We are going to be taking on the Tampa Bay Rays and Shane Baz in today's episode, but I'm just excited. I'm excited for the future of this organization, the future of some of these players. I mean, we've got Lou Walls, who is in his rookie season. We've got Walter, our first ever draft pick in his rookie season. We've got Ellie De La Cruz, who is still waiting on his first home run this year, but he's got four RBIs and he's got three stolen bases, which I think we did all in, in, in the uh, first episode. We've got Juan Soto who was our big free agent signing this year, who's hitting 362 to start the season. We've got Vinny Pasquantino, who's dominating, hitting 391. We've got Bobby Witt. We've got Luis Arise. I mean, I'm, I could not be happier. I literally could not be happier with how this team is looking. We've obviously got the veteran, the team captain, Salvador Perez. I could not be happier. I'd like to see a little bit more production in home runs from a couple guys, but other than that, I could not be happier with how the season has started here. We are first in contact, third in the entire MLB. So that just shows you how good we've been doing to start this year. Sasaki's dominating. Singer's having a good start to the year, although it's only been three starts. Pablo Lopez off to a rocky start, but he should be able to figure it out. Ian Anderson... Good start to the year. And Andrew Painter, good start to the year. So I'm excited. Can't wait. I don't want to wait anymore. It's Rays. It's Royals. And it's go time. Although, you know what? I want to give them the Tampa Bay. Yeah, give them the Devil Rays. Give them the Devil Ray uniforms. Those, those are the uniforms I grew up on. Let's give them the Devil Ray uniforms. Quick counts are on. Andrew Painter's on the mound. This is the lineup we're going to throw out there against the, the Rays. I hope you guys are excited for more Royals baseball. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club, and let's go see if we can get another W to start this hot third season. And welcome into the ballpark. Happy to have you with us. Saturday baseball on the show. It's the Tampa Bay Rays going up against the Kansas City Royals. First pitch coming at you right after the break. First pitch moments away and on the mound for Kansas City in this one Andrew Painter. Yeah he battled through seven innings last time out. He pitched well enough to get the win thanks to that offense. He'll look to turn in another quality start in this one. OK all Meeting set to go. And now he here we go ladies and gentlemen. Andrew Painter on the mound. The first time we get to see Andrew Painter since we brought him in to be a Kansas City Royal. And we got to love to see that 10 and 4 first in the Central. It is such a nice feeling to see that. And we are starting game number one, inning number one, with a strikeout. Josh Lowe strikes out looking. That was, to be fair, a, a kind of a BS strike call. Pasquatino can't drop or can't uh, jump and grab that ball, so Yandy Diaz will get a uh, one-out single in the right field. Pasquatino probably should have been able to get that, but that's okay. Yandy's on base. That's what he does. He gets on base. Brandon Lowe. Here comes the strikeout pitch. Oh, they didn't give it to me? That's a little sus. They didn't give that to me, but that... I should be able to get a double play here. Luisa Rise gets one. Can't get two. Brandon, Lowe, uh, Brandon Lowe's too fast. 
Luckily, Yandy Diaz isn't, so we go get the fielder's choice. Randy Arozarena, we got to be careful. This man has some power. He's got some pop in that bat. So we got to be a little bit careful, although he's just going to smoke that one up the middle of the field, back into center field. Two outs, runner on first and second. Come on, Painter, focus up here. This Royals team is, is tough to get out, that is for sure. They're a very solid baseball team, but so are we. We've built ourselves into a solid baseball team, and that's going to work out. Bobby Witt fields at a shortstop, goes the long way to first, gets out the runner, and that is a good end to the first inning, first half of the inning. But we're taking on Shane Baz. He's got a 1.93 ERA to start the year, two starts, a 1.14 whip. I think we can handle this. Luis Arise, I want to see that ERA up over 300, that is for sure. Especially with you. Don't swing at that. That's ball two. Come on, Luis. They are second in the alley, so it means somebody else, either the Red Sox, Orioles, Yankees, whoever, somebody is having a good season to start the year. And unfortunately, Luis Arise will fly out to right field to start his day. Bobby Witt is up. Bobby Witt's got speed. He's got some contact ability. A little bit of power, nothing too crazy. And that's going to be a great play by Yandy at third. Yandy Diaz. I didn't know he had that athleticism in him. All right. That was something I was not expecting to see. <laughs> Check that off the, the bingo card right there. That is not what I expected in this game. A Yandy Diaz diving, or sliding, I should say, grab at third base to be able to throw him out. His last seven games, Vinny's got a double and five RBIs. I'd say he's having a pretty hot start to the year. Get down. Get down. Oh, too much air underneath it. A line drive to center field, and that is the end of our half of the first. Three 3-2 count, three count to start the top of the second. Should I go back to that changeup? I might need to. We got somebody out with it earlier. Ooh, that's going to be a grounder to Bobby Witt. He's been busy today. Start this game, and he's going to fly that over to first. Get the runner out. Curtis Mead is up, hitting seven in the order. He's also hitting 400 on the year. I don't know how many games he's played so far this year, but that's not too shabby, hitting 400 to start the season. We're only a few weeks into April, and that's a cutter right to Ellie De La Cruz. Alligator it and send it to first. Two down. Andrew Painter looking good. Christian Betancourt, isn't he a Red Sox? I thought he was on the Red Sox. I guess if he is on the Red Sox in real life, he must have got moved at some point in a deal. But he's here in Tampa now. Maybe I'm thinking of somebody else. I don't know. Stares at the slider. Ball two. We'll go with a cutter as well. Hardly know her. 2-2 two -two count. Cutter comes in and he fouls it off. He had to have been late on that, was he? He was very early. I thought he was off on the timing. But I thought he was late. He happened to be early. There's the slider, and you don't call strike three. Oh, the home plate umpire is being very picky with his strike his strike zone. That is going to be a changeup sent to Bobby Witt, and that's a one, two, three, top of the second. Good job, boys. Salvador Perez is coming up but first we've got Juan Soto who's having the best season out of anybody in the lineup to start hitting 362 the most home runs the most RBIs which is what you would want from your big money free agent signing as he gets our first hit of the day and the first hit by anybody actually that's not true because Yanni Diaz got a hit for the Rays so the first hit for us is a Juan Soto single in the right. And that brings up Ellie De La Cruz. All right, Ellie. You got a little bit of pop. You got a lot of speed. I need to see something in the gap. Or a walk. I'll take a walk, too, if that's what they want to give me. 3-1 count to De La Cruz. And I'm not swinging. I probably should have. That could have been a nice base hit. It's okay. That is all right. Because it's a full count to De La Cruz. Here we go. That's the kind of hitting or pitching I wanted to see. It's going to not drop. Unbelievable. I can't I can't go back in time. It's too late. That's a double play. I cannot believe that ball did not drop. 
It's a double play. Unfortunate. Absolutely just terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. And then Teoscar grounds out to Yandi at third. Okay, that's not the start to the second inning that I wanted with that double play. I really thought that was going to drop past the glove of, of whoever was out there in, in left field. Tony Walters, on the other hand, he says, what a great start to the top of the third for them. He smacks that baseball into right center, and that's a leadoff double for the Rays. And now Josh Lowe is up. We struck him out. To lead off the game he flies out to Juan Soto and left that's the first out come on painter all you got to do is figure out a way to get out of this with no damage done Yandi's gonna do a job he's gonna push Walters to third but we do take the out so now all we got to do is get Brandon Lowe out that's a strike call there we go you love to see it let's go with the change up and that's strike three painter gets him done with no damage it's still 0-0. That's a big play from Andrew Painter right there. Absolutely massive. And now we got Walter. The DH, the first draft pick in this franchise's history. And he's going to get a double. At least a double. If he had more speed, it could be a triple. Get on your horse, Walter. Unhook the plow. And it's going to be a leadoff double for Walter. So they got a leadoff double, and we got a leadoff double. That's what I'm talking about, baby big boy hit from the rookie and now we got salvador perez all right salvi you're a veteran you're the captain oh that's gonna be into right field but 27 speed i don't think is enough i'm not gonna send him i'm not gonna send him he might have been safe that was an off throw it might have been safe but it could have been close we'll give it instead to lou walls can the rookie knock in the other rookie Lou Walls up the middle. It's going to be an out at second because the ball just kind of rolled to the, the second baseman. So they do tag on second and get Salvador Perez out. But Lou Walls scores Walter, and it's a 1-0 lead. RBI single for Lou Walls. You love to see it, and now we're stealing some bases. We might as well. Oh, they pitched out. Get there, Lou. He's out. Unbelievable throw from the catcher. Christian Betancourt, I think, is who's back there. An unbelievable throw, a pitch out from uh, Shane Baz. Tremendous play. Arise gets on base. Maybe I shouldn't have stolen the base. I don't know. 93 speed. I mean, that's fast. Lou Walls is a good base stealer, but the the combination of the pitch out and uh, Betancourt with a good throw. Got Lou Walls caught stealing. Oh, that was a slider that was in a very hittable spot. I was just early on the timing. I could have been able to smoke it. But I can't hit that one, unfortunately, not very well. Take the easy out at second. Yandi gets him, and that is the end of the, the inning. But we do get one run. So we lead 1-0 to start the fourth here in Kansas City. Randy Rosarena sends that ball foul. That gives us a 1-2 count, and I'm going to go slider away. Maybe we can catch him swinging here. And the slider ended up being a lot more inside than I would like, but that's okay. We'll go with the cutter. We'll go with the cutter, and maybe that'll work. The cutter does work. De La Cruz fields it, throws it on to first, and that's the first out of the inning. I'm glad that out of anybody on this team, Ron, Randy Rosarena is not the guy who's doing any damage against us because he is probably the most dangerous one on this team. I mean, there's they got a lot of dangerous players on this team, obviously, because they're a good a good baseball club, but a Rosarain is probably the most dangerous in terms of at the plate, so I'm glad so far he's not done any, any damage. But we're trying to get Zheng Ho Lee to strike out, but he keeps on battling. I'm going to give him a curveball because nobody's seen the curveball today. Haven't thrown it yet. Maybe we can catch him off guard, and that's not strike three. How is that not strike three? This umpire is so inconsistent, I'm having a fit. That's going to be strike three, though. The slider caught him looking, froze Lee, and he goes down with a strikeout. I can't believe they didn't call that curveball a strike, though. Unbelievable. This one's sent into right center. Lou Walls tracks it. He's got it, and that is the end of the top of the fourth. We go bottom four. 
Vinny Pasquantino is at the play. 0 for 1 today. Come on, Vinny. Do some damage. That's going to be into center field, but that's got way too much air underneath it. And that is going to be an out. But it's Juan Soto. He started the momentum. He got us our first hit of the day. First time he was up. Can he do it again? Juan Soto into right field. Just foul. Just. Just foul. That couldn't have been closer. If it was any closer, it would have been fair. This one's going to get past the second baseman, and that is going to be a single. So that's two singles for Soto today. He's having himself a great day, at least at the start. And now it's time for Ellie De La Cruz. Last time he was up, he should have had at least a double, maybe a triple. This time he's going to have nothing. It flies to second base, and it's an out. Man, I cannot get anything going with De La Cruz. I don't know what it is. Just can't get lucky with him. But now it's Teoscar Hernandez's turn. And Teoscar is going to ground into a second base ground out. That is going to end the inning. That's unfortunate. I should not have swung at that. That's my bad. That was a bad decision. Curtis Mead has a 3-1 count to lead off the fifth. All right, Painter. He's up over 70 pitches. That's number 74. Mead sends that foul. Hernandez is not going to be able to make the play. It's a full count. Come on, Painter. Deliver us a strikeout. He got him. Swing it on the cutter. Strike three. That's a great way to get out of that at bat from uh, Andrew Painter right there. Now we've got Christian Betancourt. He's got a 1-1, and he smokes that baseball to left field. Betancourt's deep. It is gone. A solo shot from Christian Betancourt gives the Rays a tie game. I really didn't think I put that ball in a bad spot. He just went and got it. Was it really that bad of a spot? I, I mean, it was slightly on the outside of the middle of the zone. It was close. It was right on the outside middle of the zone. You know what I'm talking about. It wasn't dead center, but it was right on the outside of the dead center. So it was it was still in a favorable spot. I can see why he, he sent that over the wall. But that's just unfortunate because now it's a 1-1 game. Painter does strike out Tony Walters, so that's good. And now Josh Lowe is back up. I just put it together now that they've got the brothers on the same team, right? They've got Brandon, Lo Brandon Lowe and Josh Lowe on the same team. I'm pretty sure they're brothers. Oh, but he could not handle the cutter. Or not the cutter, the curveball. And the curveball gets him strike three. But not before Betancourt does the damage. All right, Walter had the double to start or for his last at-bat. Can he do another one? He's got a full count, though. We're not swinging. <sighs> Strike three. That was such a great pitch from Shane Baz. It was perfectly placed to where if I would have hit it, it probably would have been an out. And obviously, if I didn't hit it, it was going to be a strike anyway. It was beautifully placed. Unfortunate for us. Salvador sends that to center field. That's the second out. And this bottom of the fifth is going down quickly. Can Lou Walls extend it? He got the RBI last time he was up. Lou Walls will ground a shortstop, field it, throw it. One, two, three. Unfortunate way for that inning to go. But we go top six. Y Yandy Diaz will lead off for the Rays. And he will send that fastball super foul. And we'll go with a cutter. 2-2. Two, two. Come on, Painter. Doesn't get him. 3-2. We'll go with the slider. Brandon Lowe's on deck. Come on, Painter. Deliver the slider. That was up. It got him choked. Come on, Soto. Back at the warning track. He's got it. First out. That had to make Soto run a little bit there. Don't like that. 2-1 count to Brandon Lowe. And he's got that one grounded. Foul. Let's go with a curveball here. Last time we threw the curveball, it was not called strike three, even though it should have been. This one is sent to center field. Lou Walls will easily get underneath it, and that'll be the second out. Randy Rosarena. Somebody that could be on my target list. You never know. I do like myself some of Rosarena, but he's always a little bit tricky to trade for because he's good, obviously. <laughs> and he 
thought about for a split second swinging at that slider chooses to hold off and it's a full count can we get him on the cutter no we can't a rosarena will hold off and keep this inning alive with a walk he's got decent speed on the base pass 79 speed we should be able to handle this but i guess we'll find out he's gonna go can salvador throw him out it's close but he's gonna be safe i bet if i would have thrown a fastball there we might have been able to get him out but because i threw the changeup, he's gonna go again but it's strike three no matter what. A Rosarena went again. I didn't expect that. I threw the curveball there. Luckily, Lee missed it and he struck out. We are going to warm up Kendall Graveman and Josh Stalman. We'll warm up both of them. I think Painter's Day is going to be done after six. I think he's done now. We'll give it to the bullpen. See what they can do to figure out this raised lineup. Painter's had a good day. The only mistake was that home run. Other than that, it's, he's been pretty much perfect. That's ah, a tough pitch to take. Why did I take that? Great slider from Shane Baz. It's 1-2. Bobby Witt. And, of course, I swing it. That BS. What am I doing? I did the complete opposite of what I should have. I should have swung at the first pitch and not at the second. But I am going to swing at this one. And I was early. Uh, of course I was. I get a pitch that I know is coming, and I'm early on it. That's always what happens. And that's not a swing. You cannot call that a swing. Thank you. If they would have called that a swing, then I would have been charging the, the umpires or something. We would have been fighting. There we go. That's a pitch. Right back up. Return to sender. Into center field. And Bobby Witt... He's got more speed than Lou Walls does. He's got 99. I think this might be a time to steal a base. Especially with Vinny up. Because then we can give Vinny a chance to score him if he's gone second. So maybe it'll be a pitch out. It's not going to be a pitch out. It's going to be a strike three call on Vinny. I'm going to sacrifice Vinny to take the base. I think that was a good choice, hopefully. <laughs> and they're going to intentionally walk Juan Soto interesting choice but he has been hot today two for two with two singles i think or maybe two doubles no he had two singles and now it's de la cruz who's had a rough start to the year and a rough start to this game but all he needs is something in the gap and bobby witt will score and that's exactly what he's gonna get de la cruz comes in to score de la cruz comes in clutch soto at third de la cruz walks to second and the Royals lead 2-1. to one. That is exactly what we needed. De La Cruz. Oh, and the boys are hype. The boys are hype, and they're pulling Shane Baz. He gave up the lead, and they're pulling him for Nate Pearson. All Pearson needs to do is get one out. But all Teoscar Hernandez needs to do is get one hit, and we could score two, especially because De La Cruz is on second, and he's got 99 speed. So if there's something in the outfield... No matter how deep it is, it's probably going to score both of them, but it doesn't matter because it's a fly out to right field. But Ellie De La Cruz gave us back the lead, which is exactly what we needed. Huge single. Actually, it was a double. Huge double. And you know what? We're going to bring in Kendall Graveman. And we are going to try and get this to Camilo Duvall in the ninth. It shouldn't be too difficult. We've got a good bullpen that I trust. I trust all of our guys. So it shouldn't be... It's not out of the realm of possibility that we can get it to Camilla Duvall, but Lou Wallace is going to have to get on his horse. He's not going to be able to make it there. That is a leadoff double for the Rays. Okay. We've been in this spot before. Tony Walters had a leadoff double earlier, and we didn't have any damage done. It's okay. Curtis Mead is up. That's going to be to Pasquatino. Good job, Vinny. Vinny gets a great reaction time, not letting that get to the outfield. And now it's Christian Betancourt, the man who has the only run for the Rays so far today. And that's not a strike. I mean, this umpire is killing me, man. How am I supposed to do anything if I'm not getting the calls? He's got to loosen up this strike zone a little bit. 2-2 count to Betancourt. Here comes the slider. It's ball three. I am dying out here. This umpire is killing me. 
He's absolutely killing me. We'll go with the circle change. That's going to be to a rise. It will advance the runner to third, but it's the second out. That's okay. Now we don't have to force a throw to home. We can focus on getting Tony Walters out at the plate. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Pasquatino, just tag him, Vinny. There it is. Tags him at first. And that is the end of the inning. Kendall Graveman does a beautiful job to get out of the danger. We are going to warm up Joe Jimenez. We're going to sit down uh, Josh Stalman. And we're going to schedule Jimenez to come in. Walter is up. Nate Pearson still in the game. And they're going to back Walter up. Backs him off the plate. 2-1 count. Come on, Walter. I want to hit a home run with you. I haven't done that since I drafted you. You've simulated some home runs, but I have not actually hit one in a game with you. Not in double A, not in triple A, not in anything. I would prefer to hit one with you. At least one. Since you are my first ever draft pick, and this could be it. No, it's not. It's, it's not even close. <laughs> the way that the right fielder reacted there, I thought he might have to run a little bit more, but he didn't. It's a fly out to right field. First out. Salvador Perez is up. And we know how Salvador likes to get on base. So let's do that, Salvador. That is into right field, right center. No, left center, excuse me. I don't know. I can't tell direction. <laughs> that is in the left center. But it's caught by the center fielder for the second out. Lou Walls is up. Come on, Lou. Give me a base hit to extend the inning. Yes, he will. Over the head of the shortstop into left field. And Lou Walls is on base. But I've learned my lesson. I'm not stealing with Lou Walls. Not in this game, at least. I can't risk getting thrown out when we have a chance to get another insurance run. Luis Arise. Oh, a beautiful meatball that I was early on. That was literally down the middle. That could not have been more down the middle. And it was early. But a rise into right field. It's not going to drop. It drops into the glove of the right fielder. And that's the end of the inning. We still want Joe Jimenez to come in. So he will take over the eighth. I'm going to have Coleman stretch and toss a little bit. And I'm going to have Camilla Duvall warm up. All right. So we got a 3-2 count to Josh Lowe. Let's get a strike out here. And that's not strike three. This umpire is unbelievable. How is that not strike three? That was on the corner. A 2-2 count to Yandy Diaz. He swings past the fastball. That's strike three. I guess we got to do it the old-fashioned way. 1-1 one, one count to Brandon Lowe. Josh Lowe's on first. 1-2 count. Let's go with the circle change. I cannot believe they didn't call that strike three. That's to De La Cruz. De La Cruz overthrows second. And Josh Lowe will go to third. Throw it home. Throw it. I'm pressing the button. What is happening here? He wouldn't throw it. I was pressing it. I can't believe De La Cruz just overthrew Luis Arise. What are we doing, De La Cruz? You don't make those kind of mistakes. That is going to go to right field. I really need something on the ground here from Joe Jimenez. Either a strikeout or a double play. That's a big strikeout on Randy Rosarena. Huge strikeout. And now we can just focus on getting the out, no matter how it happens. Lee will send that to right field foul territory, and we'll try to strike him out here on the circle change. Got him swinging. Jimenez survives, even with the Ellie de la Cruz error. That oh, I can't believe Ellie did that, man. That is insane from Ellie. I cannot believe he just he sent that ball so far into right field. There was no business for that, but he did it. Bobby Witt sends that to left field. That's going to be an out. One down. That was a bad pitch. I shouldn't have swung at that. Vinny Pasquitino, 1-1. One, one. He's 0 for 3 today. But he's going to send that to right field. I cannot get anything going with Pasquantino today. 0 for 4 day. But I guess it's not that big of a deal because he hasn't really needed to, I guess. Because we have the 2-1 lead. Soto, I shouldn't have swung at that. That was a bad choice. Very, very bad choice. That could have been ball four. I don't know what I was swinging at there. But I am going to swing at this, and that's going to be a single in the right field. Okay, Soto with a very good day. Three for three with a walk, intentionally. But 
he's gonna get on base and now it's the man that got us the lead Ellie did the cruise but then he almost gave it back up with that error and he's gonna send that to center field so nothing doing in the bottom of the eight but that just gives Camilo Duvall the chance to close it in the ninth all right Camilo this is why we traded for you we believe you're the guy we believe that you're the guy that can close games for us in the big moments. So this is your chance. You got six, seven, and eight in the ninth. And that's going to be a grounder to De La Cruz. Control the ball. Throw it to first. Good job. That's one down. Curtis Mead is now up. We'll go with the sinker. That's going to be back into center field for a one-out single. That's okay because now it gives us a double play opportunity gives us a nice double play opportunity Christian Betancourt the man that has done the damage today though so that that scares me a little bit we'll go with the slider doesn't chase it it's a full count Tony Walters is up on deck that's gonna be to Pascutino to second Bobby Witt back to first game over Royals win Camilo Duvall shuts the door Painter gets the W beautifully done Beautifully done from the boys. It was a little bit of an ugly one. Not a lot of offense, but it came in clutch when we needed it the most. We got the job done. We did it. Painter's the MVP and the player of the game. Gets the win. Duvall gets the save. Not a lot doing. Soto went three for three. That was about the most impressive thing that happened. I mean, Ellie did the cruise with the, with the double that scored the RBI, the game-winning RBI, which turned out to be... So I guess that was impressive. But hey, we did the job. We got the W. Today's a scouting assignment. So we know a lot about Guy Spencer now. Very interesting. He looks like a very solid player at first base. So we're going to change him. And we are going to look up... We're probably going to keep Sean Luther in there for another week. Just to get him more scouting progress. And then Herbert Don... We know a lot about him, but I'm going to keep him in for a little bit longer because I want to I want to know exactly how good he is. So that's going to be our scouting plan for this week. Finish up the series against the Rays, and we beat them 8 to nothing. Roki Sasaki is having himself a season. I knew he would be there. It just took him three years, but I knew he'd be there. Now we have a series against the Marlins, and we took two or three against them. We currently sit 14-5. and five. Playing the Red Sox who aren't very good, but they do take the first two games of the series. That's not great. All right, now we know all about Sean Luther and Herbert Don, so that's perfect. Sean Luther looks really good, by the way. And he's got decent potential in overall. And then Herbert Don also looks pretty good. But see, we know now exactly that is 89 overall, or potential. That's why I wanted to scout him a little further. So let's move on to Carlos Castilla, and we'll switch Herbert Don out for... Eric Morales, maybe? Or maybe a catcher? William Nakajima? Yeah, let's scout William Nakajima. I'm curious about him. And we're still looking at Paul Simon. So we'll finish that scouting assignment. And we don't get swept by the Red Sox. That's nice. Now we got a three-game set against the Yankees, who aren't good either. And we... What is it with, with these AL East teams? We can't beat them. 16-9 on the year. Rockies are interested in a trade. Okay, they, they want to give me Kyle Lewis, who is a 69 overall, 29-year-old player. I know a little bit about Kyle Lewis. And they want Shervin Newton. Straight up for him. I'm going to decline that. But it's interesting that he's got some value. Lou Wall strained his bicep, but he should be back pretty soon. And we have another scouting day. We know 95% of Paul Simons, who looks to be a power guy and a good defensive left fielder, but he's not very good contact-wise. And he's only 5'9". That's a very interesting build. <laughs> a 5'9 guy who's all about the power and not the contact? Not something I would expect, but whatever. Uh, Jeff Gutierrez has a really big gap in his potential and overall, so I'm very curious to see what that's all about. And we know 85% on Carlos Castilla. I think that is going to be good enough. We're not going to be in a position to draft him anyway. So I think we're just going to move on. And we're going to learn more about... Enrique Ramirez looks pretty good with his 
potential in overall. So we're going to scout him, and then we're going to keep scouting William Nakajima. So that is probably going to be the last... Well, I shouldn't say that, because we probably have one more as we go on the road. Probably to Cleveland, I would guess, in the next episode. Yeah, probably in Cleveland. But let's finish the series against the Red Sox. That's awesome. Lou Walls is back as well. Three games against the Tigers. Did we get swept? We did. We are a game back of the Guardians in May. We've kind of slowed down a little bit here in the second half of April. A lot of losses in this, the last half of April against teams that probably shouldn't be, we probably shouldn't be losing against, which is a little bit concerning. But now we got a three game set against the Cardinals and we take two of the three so far, but we have a, another scouting assignment. The final one of the episode, William Nakajima. Do we want to continue scouting him? He doesn't look that good. Jeff Gutierrez, we want to continue scouting because I'm still curious about him. Enrique Ramirez, obviously, still want to scout. William Nakajima, he doesn't look that good. He is six foot five as a catcher, though. I'm I want to keep him scouting just because of that. He's six foot five as a catcher, which is pretty crazy. Uh, so we're gonna keep an eye on him and we're gonna finalize that. So that's gonna be our final scouting assignment of the episode. Now we have a, a four game set against the Guardians, which is pretty massive because we are tied currently with the Guardians. It looks like at least the first part of the season is gonna be a battle between us and the Guardians for the division. So next episode, we will go on the road against the Guardians, but who should we watch or who should we pitch with? We've already pitched with Roki Sasaki and we have pitched with, we haven't pitched with Pablo Lopez this season. We pitched with him in the, I pitched with him in the non-existent spring training episode, <laughs> but we should probably pitch with Pablo Lopez. So let's skip that game. We win Roki Sasaki four and two Brady Singer. Big W, the bats have come alive, 15 and eight. Brady Singer gets another win, and now it's 2-2, or it's 2-0, and we'll take on the Guardians on the road in the next episode. That'll be uh, that'll be the game that we play. But the pitcher rotation, man, Sasaki's 4-2, 4-2 for Singer, 3-3 three three for Pablo, 3-1 and one for Anderson, and 5-0 and oh for Andrew Painter. He's having himself a season. He is having himself a season, and he's probably, yeah, he is. He's leading American League Cy Young so far. Now, it's obviously still pretty early, and Juan Soto's leading MVP conversations right now. You love to see that. And Walter's leading Rookie of the Year conversations with seven home runs. Oh, it's it's all coming together, boys. It is all coming together. I can't wait to get further into this, this third season, but that's going to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club. Thank you so much for stopping and watching. I truly appreciate it, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.